Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on February 20th, 2021. And we are in session five uh, talking about the pitfalls of life and how to avoid them. And here in session five, we are going to look at the pitfalls of bitterness. And we can refuse to be bitter by choosing to forgive those who betray us. Relationships can only move forward with forgiveness. And the actions of others like, like betrayal and also bad decisions can cause us uh, to be bitter. But we have a choice. We can let it go and forgive. It is very difficult to do that because of the hurt but we learn from Joseph and of course from the Lord that the Bible gives us examples of how to do that in the life of this man that we've been looking at for the past five weeks now, Joseph. You remember last week that the seven years of, of the bumper crops were over and now we are in the years, the seven years of famine. Joseph uh, had a plan that God gave him on what to do in, in the years where they had large crops where they were able to store food. And now he was the one in charge of helping everyone and they would come to him and buy food. So now his family there in Canaan is also also running out of food as is or as was a lot of the other countries around and they were going into Egypt and buying food mainly grain uh, and they were able to uh, have the food uh, that they needed and and we pick up on the story about two years in uh, to the famine and we see that Joseph's uh, ten brothers come over to Egypt to buy food not knowing who Joseph was. And so they would bow before him like he had spoken about from his dream. And now in Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 3, this is where his brothers came to buy food. And it says, Joseph could no longer keep his composure in front of all his attendants. So he called out, send everyone away from me. No one was with him when he revealed his identity to his brothers. 
but he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and also Pharaoh's household heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still living? But they could not answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Now, they were terrified because they thought that he would have been long dead. And we run the risk of falling into the pitfall of bitterness when we try to ignore the wounds in our hearts. And Joseph surely had them. He had been betrayed, he had been sold, uh, and his, his brothers happily watched him being hauled away by the Ishmaelite traders to a foreign land. And so his brothers were there to buy food, but they did not have the youngest son uh, which was Joseph's only, only real brother uh, because they had the same mom. Uh, and that was Benjamin, but his father wouldn't let him come because of what had happened to Joseph. <clears throat> but Judah wanted to help all of his brothers when uh, Joseph said that he wanted to put Benjamin in jail. And he begged Joseph to let him take his place. And about that time was when, when Joseph began to lose it as far as uh, hold back on how he felt all of his hidden emotion. And he was about to suffer an emotional breakdown. And he had to reveal who he was to his brothers. And everything came out, all of the Hidden emotion just came out, you know, like a volcano erupts, and he, he was uncontrollable in his moaning and his sobbing. And so he wanted to share with them who he was. Joseph had overheard them talking when they came to buy the first food. And he heard them talk about how sorry they were for what they had done to him. And they were afraid they were going to be punished for it. Now, it had been over 20 years since Joseph was put in the pit and then sold into slavery. But he couldn't hold back on his tears and he wept openly 
in the presence of his brothers. He was being honest about the pain that he had at the hands of his own family, his own brothers. So it had been over over 20 years when he, he said who he was. And he could have gone into all kinds of detail about what had happened to him as a slave, as a prisoner. And now he was a leader he was second only to the Pharaoh and uh, how he had been blessed with two sons and uh, he basically said that he was their long lost brother and asked about his father and if he was still alive because he hoped that his father was still alive and he wanted to reunite with his father and his brothers. They They all knelt down before him, all of his brothers. But they couldn't answer him because of all of the stress that they were under at that time. But this is how it was handled by Joseph in Chapter 45, verses 4 and 5. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near me. And they came near. I am Joseph, your brother, he said, the one that you sold into Egypt. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me here because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. <clears throat> this helps us understand the value of forgiving those who have wronged us. Understanding that we can restore those relationships that have been broken. Joseph, of course, could have showed them no mercy. He could have gotten revenge on them. But he did something quite a bit different. He sought to restore them. He wanted them to come very close to him so that they could see who he was. They knew that he had their fate in his hands. And he, he Joseph, wanted to help them understand that he was not going to do anything to harm them or to hurt them. He wanted to forgive them. And that's why he wanted them to come close to him. The things that they did to him did hurt him and he did tell them about it but 
he told them to let it go. Don't have grief. Don't be mad at yourself. Don't live with regret and worry. And don't search for anybody to blame because the Lord was with him and had a plan for him so that in the end, which is happening now with his family, that he would be able to help them and to serve them. He could have punished them, but instead he told them to get rid of their grief and their anger and observe that Joseph didn't wait for his brothers to ask to be forgiven. He didn't make them suffer or beg. He forgave them up front so that he would be first to make the move. He forgave them completely. God had given him all these years. At this time, it was a little over 20 years. Joseph, over that time frame, came to see himself as God's servant instead of a victim of the circumstances. He was able to see God's work his hand working to help him, to lead him, to guide him to the point where he could do all of the things that he did for Potiphar, for the prison warden, and now for the Pharaoh. And he was doing it so he could preserve life. God worked through what they had done so that Joseph could get to Egypt and carry out God's plan for keeping his people alive. Not only did he forgive them, but he did it with hugs, kisses, and tears. He started to hug his brother first, that was Benjamin. And then he wept over each of his other brothers, and hugged them, and he kissed them. So God also gave him a plan on how to help his family. And here is what the plan was. Chapter 45, verses 9 through 11 says, Return quickly to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me without delay. You can settle in the land of Goshen and be near me, you, your children, and your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, and all you have. There I will sustain you, for there will be five more years of famine. Otherwise you, your household, and everything you have will become destitute. There were other countries, there were people from Egypt, but a lot from other countries able to come and buy food. And 
Joseph wanted to make sure that his family was taken care of. And so he asked them to bring his father there and everything that they had, all of their families. And they would go to the best part of the country there in Goshen where they could raise their families and also their flocks and their herds because of the pasturing and the water uh, that was there. And we see that after they got there, they did very well. And we will see later on how they, how they grew and they became very large in numbers there in Goshen. So, of course, he wanted to get back with all of his family, but especially his brother Benjamin and his father, Jacob. He wanted to spend time with them. He wanted to help them. He wanted to do everything that he could for them. And so that was his plan, and they did uh, leave and go back and get their father and everything they had. Uh, his invitation to his brothers to join their father in Goshen revealed that Joseph had sincerely forgiven them. Joseph did have skills that were given to him from God, and he was able to plan ahead. And uh, that was because of his, of his trust in the Lord, steadfast trust in the Lord. He knew that the famine would last five more years, and that if, if his family stayed in the land of Canaan, that they would be destitute, that they would spend all they had for food. They wouldn't be able to grow anything. Uh, they would lose everything that they had. So, of course, Joseph did not want his family to, to turn down that offer. So he did not want any kind of revenge for what had happened to him. He forgave them, and he was eager to help them and their families. The bottom line is that he saved their lives. And God used him to keep his promise to Abraham. Jacob's move to Goshen guaranteed that they would be well protected and that his family would grow while he was there. And several years, actually many years later, Moses would lead them back to the land of Canaan. So Joseph shows us the power that we get from the Lord to forgive others. And there's several ways that we can use this. We can be aware 
and also be mindful uh, when you feel like you have been wronged and go to God and seek the grace that you need to wipe away your hurt. And we can learn from the past. We can pray. We can spend some time looking back on your upbringing and the way that you dealt with anger and hurt are often more caught than taught. In other words, you just do, you know, like what you've seen rather than learn from God's Word how to deal with these events that come into your life. Ask the Lord to break any unhealthy cycles of sinful responses to hurt. And then there are ways to process hurt when your feelings are hurt. Do not stonewall or choose to be silent. Though the forms of inner rage are very subtle, they are not less damaging. So we need to talk with others about your feelings and avoid the temptation to hold it in. So look at your relationships in, in each of our lives. How do we handle those situations with our family, with, in our church, and our friends? You can reconcile if you forgive. And that's just having a conversation with those folks and uh, look for common ground. Forgive them and you'll be able to move on. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your forgiveness. Help us to forgive in the same way we understand and learn from you. Help us to forgive. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.